Cut. Cut. and alcohol change people's lives. Well, as a pastor in a small community, um, we do see a lot of people who uh, struggle with drugs and alcohol, and um, and we've just literally seen it destroy people's lives. Uh, we've seen it ruin their family relationships. We've seen uh, drugs and alcohol uh, destroy them economically, um, ruin them financially. Um, we, we found them to, uh, to in many cases, be unable to work and carry on uh, normal uh, jobs because they're um, struggling with, with an alcohol addiction or a drug addiction. So basically I would say that, that drugs and alcohol, from, from my perspective as a pastor, um, has ruined more lives probably than any other single influence in our society today. Okay, um, what advice would you give young people? You know, once again I have to speak as a pastor here, but uh, I really think that uh, the increase in drug use and alcohol use is a substitute for uh, particularly young people, I think, seeking or looking for uh, meaning in their life. And in many other uh, cases, they're trying to uh, impress maybe their uh, peers, their friends, by being involved in, in the use of drugs or alcohol. Some of them have difficult home lives, and as a result, they're looking for a way of escape by getting into uh, the use of drugs or alcohol. And I think what they're really looking for is some meaning in their lives. And um, I believe that can really only be found from a spiritual uh, point of view. So I would encourage uh, young people today, particularly, uh, to find uh, real meaning in their lives from those spiritual roots that can be found, I think, in the teachings of the Bible and in the teachings of Jesus Christ who uh, told us uh, that he came to bring us life and to give it to us abundantly. So my encouragement to young people today is to seek real answers from the sources that can pro provide those answers that are really satisfying to their need to have a, a roots in life and a, a grounding in life that gives them real purpose and real meaning. And um, that would be my advice is don't uh, seek out the cheap substitutes for meaning, but seek out real meaning in life uh, that will really uh, return the joy and peace back to you that, you, that you're really looking for. And, uh, alcohol and drugs will give a temporary high and a temporary sort of joy, but it's always, um, it's always going to end up in disaster. Okay. <clears throat> well, thanks. You're welcome. Go. How have you seen drugs and alcohol change people's lives? Well, I've watched people that I loved very much die. That's a pretty big change in their life. I've uh, watched people who are into drugs get away and become people again. Um, and I've watched people that I respected a lot turn into people that whose words uh, I had no respect for at all. Okay, um, what advice do you have to give young people? Action. Action. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what, what advice, advice would I give to people who are thinking about trying drugs? Well, it's really hard for for anybody to tell someone not to try something, um, you know, it, it's 
for a kid, it's like, how can you tell me, don't try this? And, and try to get away with that. You know, why don't try this? You, you mean if I try this, I will die? Obviously, you're not dead. So there's some reason you tried it. You came through it. Why shouldn't I be able to try it? Um, I think our responsibility as parents is to try and keep you from making mistakes. Um, I go to hospitals. I'm a paramedic. I go to hospitals every night. 90% of the time, the people that I see there have something to do with drugs. Um, I see kids that are, that are that are just beautiful, beautiful children, 18 year olds, 17 year olds. They think life is never going to touch them. They're going to have a great time. Everybody gets high. Let's just do something different. Let's go drive in. Um, I know what I'm doing. And then the next moment, it's a horror story. If, if they survive at all with their limbs, that's one thing. Usually, they're dead or, or they're brain damaged. And, they, and people understand, they, the, the parents ask, what happened to them? Why my, why my child? Why did this happen to my child? It was the same kind of craziness that happened to every other parent. Um, when, when everybody else's parents were younger, they, they tried, who knows, going over rapids in a canoe, um, drink a little too much whiskey and drag racing. Everybody wants to try something new. They want to show that they're tougher, they're better, they can handle it, they're adults, they're not going to make the same mistakes. But, and some of them come through it. Some of them come out of it and they, they come out of it without, without an injury. No problems at all. And then the other ones die. And, and the deaths are, are horrible. So there's nothing left of it. Sometimes they survive it physically, but they have no, no mind of their own. They, they become the person that they least wanted to be, someone who was controlled and taken care of for the rest of their life. That's what they are. They are in bed. They're paraplegic. They can't walk. They can't move, they can't talk, they're spoon-fed the rest of their life just because they thought they were indestructible like every other teenager. Um, doing a drug that you know nothing about or, or doing a drug that, that somebody gives you who you don't know is just as bad as getting in a car for the first time and not learning how to drive. You floor it, you take it all the way until you hit the wall and you're dead. You're gone. You're nobody anymore. I go into these emergency rooms every night, and I, I see beautiful, beautiful kids that they'll never walk again. They'll never play basketball. They have no hope for the future. Even if they have a brain left to think with, they're not going to be able to, to do those things that they want to do. I see people wake up the next day after being restrained for the entire, restrained for the entire night, um, trying to kill everybody who's around them, asking why am I here? And these are people that would normally, everybody else would say, well, not my son, not my daughter. They would never do anything like that. They can't believe it themselves. You're, you're counting on a person who sells you a drug or gives you something new to take, you're taking a stranger's word that you're going to be fine. And you never know what's going to happen. There, there are lifelong drug addicts, 15, 20 years, and they'll buy something from someone else that they're assured, it's okay, this is cool, this is good drugs, this stuff is great. And it's battery acid. They go through misery and pain. Because they trust in somebody else because they want this drug so bad. I mean, how can you take that kind of a chance? It's unbelievable what I see in hospitals. Well, thank you. How have you seen drugs and alcohol change people's lives? And what advice would you give young people? 
Well, I've seen uh, drugs change people's lives in a lot of ways. Uh, there's car accidents, uh, people fight over drugs, uh, but maybe one of the most important ways I've seen it uh, change people's lives is many, many years down the road, even if you uh, kind of get away from the drug stuff, uh, years down the road it's very difficult to get a good job. Employers still look for that and um, it's just real, real difficult. I hire people all the time and if they've got drug history, uh, we don't hire them. There are enough people out there without a drug history and we, we find good employees that way all the time. Um, but I've seen people hurt in fights, fighting over drugs. I've seen people's families hurt because people owe people drugs. I've seen people's health go uh, as low as it can possibly go because they use so many drugs or use alcohol and it's just best not to get started. Um, my advice is if, if you find yourself uh, in a group of people and they want you to use drugs then I think you ought to use your parents or your friends or your doctor or whatever as an excuse to get away from it. I know a lot of kids that have said, no, I don't do drugs because I got an allergy, my doctor, I'll get real, real sick and that kind of, you know. It doesn't matter what the excuse is, you just have to come up with an excuse and stay away from it. And then probably the easiest thing to do is just hang around good kids and good people and, and that won't be a temptation. Um, just stay away from it and I guarantee it'll be much easier to get a good job, you're going to feel a lot better. You know, at my age, I've seen people go for years and years and years on drugs and then get away from it and um, they wish now. Uh, you'll eventually get away from it for the most part but they wish now that they would have just stayed away from it in the beginning. Um, it seems like it might be fun and exciting when you're bored but the, it, it's not. It, it's a very dangerous thing to do. You don't know uh, how pure the drugs are. I've seen a lot of kids paralyzed and, and their hearts stop and stuff because there's bad um, agents in the drug when they cut it. Um, it's just best not to get involved in the start. <clears throat> okay, and thank you, Tim.